Today I'm sharing with you my version of the Winslow Culottes by Helen's Closet but not the original version, a hacked one in this beautiful tensile twill so if you find this super interesting keep watching Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. this is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing Limitless sewing in this channel I bring to you two videos a week or full of practical sewing with every single video My goal is that you can take something away for yourself that you can use maybe in the future in other things You might remember the things that you see here on this channel Lots of pattern companies put up some sales at the end of November and I had been waiting for that for the whole year <laughs> to purchase the patterns I'd been looking at and one of them was a Winslow Culottes by Helen's Closet she had a sale and I took advantage of that now the Winslow Culottes originally are designed to be super mega wide leg pants they can be made in four different lengths um, that is what the pattern offers different lengths, shorts above the knee, midi length and full length to the floor the main feature is that on the front and back on each leg you have a deep inverted box pleat that looks really cool and you have a rectangle waistband that has an invisible zipper on the center back seam and that zipper goes into the waistband whenever I see pockets mentioned in patterns and I see pattern pieces my brain just blocks them out and they don't exist because I don't like inseam pockets I just don't like them. I won't put them on any type of culottes, pants or skirt or dress. They are just gone, like they don't exist. But if you like to put them on your clothes, the instructions are really clear in how to put them in. I just don't do them, you know, they just create bulk at the hips and I don't really need that aesthetically. I don't need that. I don't put my hands in my pockets and I don't put things in pockets. So yeah, you've heard me say that before. <laughs> For this style you can use a wide variety of light to medium weight woven fabrics They mention a huge list of fabric and it all depends on the style that you like They do recommend that for the long like to the floor or midi length you use more of the lighter weight fabrics that drape really nice or else you they are very voluminous If you use a more medium weight fabric you might end up with a lot of volume down there so I, I agree also, whenever there's um, a lot of volume in a style, I like to go to the lighter fabrics, you know, <laughs> not chiffon, because then it would be totally she, you know. Rayon Charlie, Crepe de Chine, Viscose Poplin, Linen and Tensile Twill are some of the fabrics that they mentioned. I chose for my version a Tensile Twill. This was a fabric sent to me by Minerva.com in exchange for a blog post and it's in a greyish colour, it has a slight sheen to it and it's got all the drapey flowy characteristics that you would want in this length and for this style. The pattern has a range of sizes that go from 0 to 30 and that will go from a waist of 24 to 48 inches and hips of 33 to 58 inches. This pattern can work for a lot of people. Now in the original version that has just the rectangle waistband on the top with all the box pleats, the amount of positive ease they drafted into the waist is minimal. It's three quarters of an inch or two centimeters. Now I find that amount of ease around for a waistband to be very minimal. I like at least one inch. An inch and a quarter I'm really comfortable with because we all have fluctuations in our waist. You know, you can try on something with a fitted waistband in the morning and then by mid-morning it's just not fitting that comfortable anymore. Uh, don't even tell me about mid-afternoon, you know. Yeah, that's why I, I prefer at least to have a waistband that has at least an inch to an inch and a quarter of positive ease so it depends on what you like if you like it like that then it's cool if not if I were making the original version I would maybe sew one of the box pleats a little bit not that deep to just give me that tiny tiny bit I need and I would cut the waistband a tiny tiny bit longer but I wouldn't modify or go up a size or anything like that you know now I never intended to make the original version I always wanted to make some hacks now there is a blog post on Helen's Closet's blog and they have a lot of hacks there for this pattern the most common one is cutting out a longer waistband to put across the whole top and not actually sew any of the pleats and then just put an elastic all around the waist to bring it in you know and they also have one that's just got elastic at the back so flat front waistband and elastic at the back in that case you wouldn't make the box pleats that are on the back pieces 
Now that really spoke to me. <laughs> I have made styles before in pants and skirts that have a flat front and elastic at the back and I thought yep that is the direction I'm gonna go with these. Initially I was very tempted to make the wrap pants hack that they have on the blog post but then I changed my mind. I just changed my mind you know. <laughs> my sister-in-law came once in the afternoon and she was wearing wide wide pants they were all to the floor they weren't like this style they just had another different type of pleat at the front and within the pleat there was a slit probably a, a four inches above her knee the slit started to the bottom and when she walked that slit looked really beautiful it was a very flowy fabric and when I saw those pants on her I thought ah I just got that light bulb moment for these culottes that deep inverted box pleat on the front if I just added an extra seam there and created a slit to come from there it would create some interest on these culottes you know I just always am looking for ways to make things interesting and show my style I love slits I add them onto things I put them on tops I love making mitered corners so yeah what you're going to see in up close and so personal is how I devised this hack Along the way I did not like how this was turning out and I fixed it and changed it to something different and you're going to see the process of how I came to have the culottes that I really wanted. So let's hop into all the practical sewing goodness that is up close and so personal. Don't you think this is starting to wear This is the front pattern piece of the Winslow culottes and it's a huge pattern piece so I have drawn a smaller thing to represent what I'm going to do to show you and so it's easier to see. The Winslow culottes have three little marks there along the waist. This is one front, there would be another one and this little mark would fold into there and that one would fold into there forming a box pleat. So I've brought those marks into the middle one and that is how that inverted box pleat would look on the front. Now the little hack I want to do and you can see my line in there I want to create a seam there right in the middle of that box pleat and I have drawn the line there right on the middle of that mark the middle mark there so I'm going to slice this all the way to the bottom so I have cut that and separated it so I'm going to have two pieces for each front leg. I'm going to be adding about an inch of seam allowance for each side so to this one I'll add an inch there to that one I'll add an inch there and my plan is then to reunite these and sew this down as per usual up to about 20 inches there about 50 centimeters that's just above my knee and then from there on to the bottom I'll have an open slit so my leg is going to look like that, it will still have the inverted box pleat, underneath this pleat will be that seam that will be closed up to 20 inches and then I'll have a slit there that will sort of open as I move. Here are my two front pattern pieces, it's just the one piece originally that I sliced and placed it there and now I've marked from the edge of these an inch there and an inch there. I've done that really carefully with a ruler and that will be my seam allowance for this extra seam I'm adding. I've placed the mark there at 20 inches that's where the seam is going to be closed and from then on this will be a slit open up to there. I'm making the hack with the flat front waistband and elasticated at the back so I'm not going to be cutting out the waistband until I have everything assembled so I can measure how much the top really does need because at the back I'm not going to be closing up this pleat I'm just going to be leaving it open so it'll be different I'll just leave the waistband till the end. I've got the two front legs semi-assembled and I'm going to show you how the top looks here. I have sewn that extra seam I created myself with a one inch seam allowance that is one mark there and that is one mark that forms the box pleat that meets there in the middle of that seam I created. That comes later. But what I did here to make this super neat is I did a guiding stitch, 3 eighths of an inch approximately, a little bit less than that, just the edge of my presser foot. And then I press that seam in and then I'm going to top stitch and this will be super enclosed. I didn't want to serge this because this then goes into an open slit. And if there's wind or anything, I would rather have this show from the wrong side than just a surged edge and then the top stitching, you know. So that's just neater. Now on the bottom, 
I also did a guide stitch there and that's going to be the first fold of the hem that I'm going to do at a later stage. What I'm going to do now is the mitered corners. So I'm just going to do that. It's a little bit different when I've got folded edges but it's basically the same, um, the same width from there is the same that's going to be here. So I just have to measure and do it and then I'll do that there, there and on these two sides. And then I can keep putting the culottes together. The back is just a normal piece. It's just really easy after this bit now. This is one of the mitered corners that I'm going to do. And the difference to the ones I've already shown is that this one has folded edges. So the ones I've shown before have just had surged edges here on the side. But in actual fact, it's the same technique. I just pretend and ignore these folds. The fold is there and I'll just keep it that way, pretending that's how the edge is going to be finished because that's just how it's going to be finished you know so it doesn't really change my measurements so whatever I folded in there is the same as I folded in there that crease line marks the amount of hem that I'm going to do and the slit and you can see the dot there that I marked so there and there and then I just drew a diagonal line across and now I'm just going to put these right sides together like that and then I'm just going to match the lines on both sides and I'm just going to have like a little triangle there including that fold on both sides like that okay so I've just matched the line you can see the blue line there matches the blue line on the other side and I'm just going to do a straight stitch there as usual with a mitered corner and then just trim off the excess This is how one of the slits is looking with the mitered corners there and it's looking pretty neat as best as I can with this fabric and the hem has been pressed here. One fold, a smaller one and the second one I have removed that guide stitch that helped me press as straight as possible and there you can see that the mitered corner includes the fold there. So before I actually do the top stitching of the hem and the slits. I'm going to hand baste this to make sure it doesn't slide. This fabric is not that easy to work with. It does sort of slide around. I have two very crumpled legs here for the culottes. I've already assembled them, done the side seams and the inseam. That extra seam I added there. I have folded everything in and everything has been hand basted. So I'm going to be sewing this now, top stitching both of these in a continuous stitch. I'll probably start up there, go there, pivot, go around, come around, hip pivot and then finish up there on both. And when that's done, then I'm going to put the two pieces together. I'm going to start sewing here on this side and I don't have like a place to reference my sewing like because the plate there with all the little marks it's going to be covered by fabric so I just have to guide the edge of the presser foot by eye and try to keep it straight in reference to that seam right there. I've pushed the needle to the left just to make it easier on myself so I have more distance between the seam and the needle and I'm just trying to leave maybe like maybe a quarter of an inch between the seam and the edge of the presser foot in order to sew. Now this is super awkward. I'm always touching that fabric doesn't get under here and I don't end up sewing what I don't have to under there. Now I'm getting to the slit and when I start sewing there, I can actually guide the edge of the fabric to the marks on the plate under there. See how much fabric is bunching up here? This would be impossible to do if I'd had the two legs sewn on together, like the proper pants or assembled. That's why I'm doing one leg and then the other separately.
is the top of one of the legs where I added the extra seam. I have already top stitched that down. That's how it's going to look on the right side. And I have those little marks there. And these are the ones that are supposed to meet in that middle of that seam there. Now the way I like to do these pleats is just to put these two marks together. So find one on one side and on the other there. And now I'm just going to do a basting stitch about an inch and a half long. And that's going to help me assemble this pleat and then at a later stage that will get taken out. So I just did that stitch right there with a long length and that will just help put the pleat together. Then I'll remove this afterwards so I don't back tack or anything like that. Now turning this to the right side, I'm just going to open this pleat there and make this seam that I've just done match my seam that I created because that's where the mark of the original pants were without the seam so I haven't essentially changed anything up here I've just added an extra seam so I can do my slit nicely and so I'm just gonna put this together there and now on the top there I'm gonna just do another basting stitch to hold the pleat in place and then I can forget about it and just attach on the waistband after I've done the waistband I'm gonna remove the stitch that basting stitch from here and that will just release that box pleat and leave it free to come out of the waistband. So you can see the pleat has been formed there. My extra seam is in the middle there. Within the seam allowance, you know, you don't want this basting stitch to show. <laughs> so I'll do the other leg and then I can actually put both legs together. I have one, you know, on the wrong sides up and one I turned the right side out. So I'm going to slide this leg into here and that way I'll have right sides together and I can do one continuous stitch to sew the front and the back crotch in one go. So I put the leg inside the other and I have right sides together. This is the back, there is the inseam, there is the front. Now the side seams I press towards the back and the inseams are pressed towards the back. This is the back leg. So just one stitch right there, serge and then the culottes are sort of assembled and all that's left is to measure at the top how long my waistband actually needs to be so I can cut it exactly and then do all the elastic bit on the back. This is the waistband piece for the culottes. This is the grain line there. It says put on the fold. This is actually the fold of the fabric and the selvage. So I just went ahead and cut the whole width here. I'm going to need a longer length than the normal waistband because I'm not folding in the pleats at the back so I'm just I know it's going to be less than the full width of the fabric so I just cut it out I measured it I'm going to have an excess but I'm just, just going to figure that out as I put it onto the pants now from the center here I have measured how much is going to be on the front so there is a certain measurement there on one side where the center seam is here and on the other side and I'm going to be interfacing just this area and a little bit past so probably an inch towards the back here from there over here and then all this bit that's going to be on the back with the elastic is not going to be interfaced it'll be bulky enough with the elastic and I'll have a seam on the center back with the waistband there here is my waistband partially interfaced. This is the middle area here. I have a little crease there to mark the center front. So it's been interfaced there. The back sort of starts there and there, the side seam, and then it's not interfaced. I have sewn a guide stitch at 5 eighths of an inch here and pressed one of these sides up. The other side is raw. This is the side I'm gonna be attaching to the waist of the clots. And then to fold over, this side is already done. So I folded that at 5 8 and then I'm going to be sewing to the waist at 3 8 And then when I fold this, it'll make the exact width I need for the elastic I have. I'm not sure what elastic or... I don't know. I'm just going to make this waistband work for the elastic I have. 
I've tried it on and I really don't like the look of this at the back, how it looks. I think it's just too much excess at the waistband. So I'm regretting making this version. I really didn't know how it was going to look until I put it on myself. I have made other pants or skirts that are similar to this but have less volume into the back. Now the volume here is a lot because of those deep box pleats. So I'm actually going to undo this part of the waistband like from the side seam all the way around the back, remove that elastic and think about just doing the original version but a mix with this. I'll just do those deep box pleats a bit smaller so that I can still have elastic at the back and slip it up instead of putting a zipper here. Uh, I don't really like putting zippers on the hip, I really dislike that. I don't feel like putting one on the back. So I'm going to do like a mix of this, put some box pleats to remove a bit of this excess while still keeping the waist a little bit bigger so I can put it on, you know, just slip it on. This is the back, I've taken just the back part of the waistband off. You can see the stitch lines there from when I put it on there. Now that mark is the original depth of this back pleat there, this inverted box pleat. So I remember on the front I did a basting stitch there. Well, I'm just going to take about half of the volume for the pleats at the back. So I've just done an, another line there where I'm going to sew with a basting stitch and then form a smaller pleat at the back so that I still have room to use these with an elastic at the back and just pull them up. Now, this type of fabric, when you unsew things, it really leaves a mark. So I am not interested in undoing parts of the side seams to add on zippers. I don't think it's going to look good. So it's not an option I'm even considering. So that's why I'm just making the pleats a bit smaller at the back and I'll have a mix of both. Okay, so you saw that I had finished the culottes basically. <laughs> All I had to do was sew on that waistband. And once I'd threaded the elastic through and sewn both sides, you know, I thought I'm going to go and try them on, you know, because at that stage I could actually go and try them on properly. And I didn't like it how it looked on the back. It was just too much volume to have gathered at the back. Now, knowing that the volume was just too much at the back, I think if you did the hack where you did the whole waistband elasticated without any box pleats, you would have a lot of volume around the waist a lot of gathering and I don't think that would be very flattering in my opinion so yeah I didn't like it at all and because I'm determined to have a garment that I like I just went and unpicked the whole back of the waistband I had no trouble doing that adding on box pleats at the back to decrease the volume there but just I used half the depth of the marks there and then I did my box pleat, put the waistband back on, did the whole process of threading the elastic on the back again. And now I have a mix of both worlds. I have box pleats at the back that aren't that big and I have an elastic that allows me to pull up and down. The hack I made is not in a, like a hack from the blog. It's my hack, it's my own hack. And I like that. I like cre creating my own things and achieving the garment that I really wanted. So here it is. You can see how neat the flat waistband is there and that the pleats come out of there you saw that I had basted partially that just to help me construct the pants but then it's just a basting stitch you just pull that out and now it's released you know and at the back we have elastic and I did sew the elastic because these elastics tend to flop and flip inside and that's not very comfortable so I did do two rows of stitching to hold that down and I have box pleats right there. They sort of blend into the gathers there but they did remove a lot of the gathers that I would have had here. So in essence it would look like it's just gathered at the back but the little sneaky box pleats there make it less bulky here at the waist and it makes it more comfortable and not poof out. It was like the elastic and then poof at the back. It did not look very good, at least on me, <laughs> you know. My favorite feature of these is the extra seam I created that comes from the middle of that deep box pleat and then that turns into the slit. The slit finishes right above my knee. I love that. 
I love the mitered corners there, everything's super neat. I think guiding stitches can really help you achieve a really clean, even fold line when you want to press long, long seams that you have to fold under. You know, you can eyeball, I certainly do eyeball sometimes, but when it's so long and so many seams, I'd rather just whiz past and do a guide stitch with a long stitch length, fold, press, you know, press nicely and then psh, just remove it, gone, and then I get really neat seams, you know? Here you can see the front inside out, you can see the box pleat there with the seam and how I finished that so it would be super neat and clean, you know, it's gonna be safe, I can wash this and it's not gonna come apart. And I just think surging the edges wouldn't have looked as pretty on the slits. It is a really flowy style and when I move, you sometimes do see the inside there. So I want it to look like this with the mitered corners and the hem and everything super neat. You know, at the back, that's how it looks. In essence, I love them. I really love them. When I've tried them on, I've put them on. They just swish around beautifully. This fabric is super nice for this project, super flowy. I didn't include the waistband construction on this video because it would have just been too long. I would love to share this technique as a standalone so that you can apply it to other styles or garments if you like the technique. You might like it, you might not, but I like to share the way I sew. Sometimes it's not traditional, but I do put a lot of thought into what I do and I've been doing this for years. That's why I feel sort of confident to share how I do it. Um, that's just a little bit different. So look out for that video super soon. Here I am in full length, just with a normal black top. I have nothing that goes with this other than this black top in this trip. And I've just made these, look how wide they are. And slits, I think, give it something extra. The back. It basically looks like a skirt. And I would never wear a skirt this length, but I will wear culottes this length. It's a nice windy day, so you can see how nicely it flows and drapes. And slits are discreet, you know, they don't go up to the thigh, just above the knee. And they're in between that box pleat, just like I wanted. And on the back, lots of volume, little pleats there at the back as well. I'd like to share with you where I got the inspiration to finish the slits in the way that I did. And there are things I've done in the past, techniques I've done on other patterns that sort of stay in my, you know, files in my head of sewing techniques. <laughs> when I made my Sienna coat view A, the long one I made in denim, I'll put a picture here. The center back seam has a slit and the whole seam, you sew it, you press it, you fold it in, you finish it the same way that I finish these slits. And so I remembered that from that coat and thought, yep, I'm going to finish it like that. The only difference was that here I did my corners and in the Sienna coat on the back, I didn't because it wasn't part of the instructions. That's how it ended up being like that, inspired by something I made in October. I remembered and I really like the slits to be finished this way. If you enjoyed today's video, consider subscribing to this channel where you will find a lot of sewing content. Also tap on the bell so you get notified when videos go live. I will see you again on Friday with another sewing video. Until then, happy sewing. Bye.